Uh, I am going to talk to you about uh, this uh, glass change and temperature and uh, a little bit more details. And then this is a, a little bit higher end. And the question is actually uh, studying this idea about polystyrene has a Tg around 100 degrees C. And if you also have a PMMA, PMMA has a Tg around, let's say, 110 degrees C, and 105 degrees C. And then when you blend them together, how do you know we have a single Tg or uh, you know, the double Tgs? It's hard to, almost impossible for you to uh, describe as the blended Tg. Whether it's a single TG versus a double TG. Oh, this is, I don't know what's happening here. Okay. Double TG. Okay. And uh, that's a measure of the miscibilities. And this whole technique is, uh, so I, what I'm calling is, You know, my, my iPad is screen is going through a certain <laughs> enthalpy relaxation. So what what I'm trying to say is the following. I I give you the idea about this is your T G uh, so so you're, you're looking at heat capacity, right? heat flow, and this is the temperature. And I give you an idea about that should be your uh, Tg. This is your Tg. Right? So at around the Tg, oh, I'm going to redraw that. That around the Tg, this is your Tg, and that's the, that's the shape of the curve looks like this. But now, I am going to show you the case. Actually, this, this experiment is also uh, clearly shown by this Bernie Wunderlich when he was at RPI. Oh my, okay. I don't know what's happening to this. So if I draw this, the same CP for the same polymer sample, and this is, let's say, TG. Sometimes uh, you, you, you should be able to make the sample Just looks like this. Okay, so this is a uh, what what we call the uh, this overshoot. It is not really big as a melting peak, but it's this overshoot is uh, what looks like a sort of the looks like an enthalpy relaxation, and this is uh, sometimes you are seeing this, and you can. Uh, in, uh, kind of promote this behavior by uh, doing the so this is a temperature by the essentially will be related to the compact uh, structure more compact structure in glassy state. And in other words, uh, this is a one is essentially what is called a, what they call it, a, in, this is actually a term that people also use, it's called the aging process. Okay. So how you do the enthalpy relaxation, essentially you are going to anneal a polymer sample at temperature which is a glass and temperature 
lower by about 20 degrees C. So you are in the well within the glassy temperatures. Uh, so at this temperature, 20 degrees below, for example, polystyrene, you do it at 80 degrees C. If you do, for so example here, if you anneal PS at 80 degrees C for, let's say, for about a week, right? you, you have a, a lot of, a lot of um, the big uh, amplification of this overshoot in DSC uh, structures. And so that's what is called enthalpy relaxation. And I can explain you the sort of the fundamental uh, reasons why this is a case. And so, but I, I just wanted to give you an utility of this. For the case of the PSPMMA blend, right? PSPMMA blend, if this uh, this is a case, can be a, taken advantage of for for your case because uh, we know that PSPMMA is not compatible, and then if you draw this, and you are hoping to see. Okay, so this is a. Um, it's not a good drawing. <laughs> let, me, let me do a better drawing. So you are seeing the TG, and you are seeing the TG. So that will be a, your hope uh, for n capturing one TG or the second TG from the PS and PMMA. This will be a temperature. Mm -hmm. This is your heat capacity or heat flow for, for this blend. But if you do the, essentially, you blend your sample, blend anneal, at 80 degrees C for for you know, in a few days in in the thermal chambers, and then what you are going to see is quite quite interesting. Okay, so so this is your this is your DSC. This is your temperature, and then this is the heat flow. And then what you see now will be something looks like okay. so it's it's hard uh, for somebody seeing the let's say the experiment data. It looks like a broad transition. It looks like a broad transition, whether there is a single TG or two TGs are there. Whereas when you do this experiment, you're seeing a little blips, seeing here, and then you will see that that's a, uh, there are two incompatible domain whose TG happen to be the same or not. So this enthalpy relaxation technique is essentially you are aging your sample at the temperature sub TG annealing, and so so that making the structure is a more compact. And how come this is, is possible for doing the, such an experiment? This is a this is the utility of that uh, experiment, but fundamentals. Why this overshoot peak is happening is can be shown in the following. So, I am going to draw the same um, figure that I've been drawing before. Do you remind? Do you guys remember? Uh, we draw. I drove you. The, okay, so this is a volume, and this is a temperature, and then uh, here is a one, and then here is a rubbery, and so this is a TG. So that's what I've been telling you all the time. But do you also remember, there actually in the textbook figure, they say that there is actually multiple volumes are possible. Okay. So there are, there are multiple volumes are possible uh, for in the glassy state, okay? depending on the, the, how the glass is, how the cooling has occurred. So uh, this is a region where the experiment, the better way actually doing it is, this is a rubbery state. If you cool it down, and this is a essentially faster cooling, and this is a more like a slow cooling. 
and they will they will have a more compact uh, volume. So the, in the glassy state, their actually volume or their compactness uh, in in uh, packing the chain can have a much more uh, different ranges of, of the behavior. And so now I am going to show the case uh, the where uh, so I'm going to I guess I'm, let me be using the consistent colors. Okay, so you know this is a proportional to enthalpy, and then. So at the same argument, uh, we are we are putting the CP, which is uh, these values, <laughs> and then you remember. Okay, so this is a uh, at the TG. Right? So this time I'm going to use a little thin thinner colors. So okay, so this will be like this, and this will be like that, and that will be. There will be the one that coming from the black line. Right. Well, well, why don't I just do that? Okay, so this is a case where the faster cooling, you anticipate this kind of the DSC profile. But now let's let's have a look at it and understanding about the, the slope here. So uh, in this, let, if I if I start from here, this is where the things will go up and then eventually they want to try to catch up over there uh, of the, the volume in the rubbery state. So, so what's going to happen is this will be a your, your curve which is a same slope but at this region you will see that what is the slope looks like over there. That slope is highest slope than anything other. It's almost like a, a little discontinuous change in the vicinity of the TG because by essentially this annealing your sample at uh, temperature 20 degrees below the TG, you're going to make the structure compact and compact, and then you will have a developed a li little a region that looks like a little uh, the, the discontinuity in the volume change. So therefore, this one will be will be like this. This is an overshoot where you have uh, some sample from the slow cooling, or you have a sample that annealed at temperature, which is a temperature lower than, let's say, 20 degree lower than TG. So the reason that I said a 20 degree lower than TG is because you do still have a mobility. If you anneal your sample at temperature you know, 50 degree or 100 degree below the TG, chains are so frozen that the, the compact, uh, the packing of the chain is really, really slow process. but you know, still, uh, when you have about 20 degrees below the TG, you have a sufficient enough mobility of the chamfer in the glassy state. They can try to uh, make the structure more compact and compact. As a consequence, you will see this overshoot showing up here. 